Okay, so what is up, y'all? Just like super excited because I today I'm going to be talking about some tips for beginner herbalists, but I feel like I'm just feeling a little sentimental because this was like the first video that I created on my YouTube channel and like Y'all, I was so nervous when I made that video. Like, you can't see it in the video, but I was literally like sweating in between the shots and I had to pause every two seconds because I could only say like four words in a row without like forgetting what I wanted to say. And so, I don't know. I was just like, I just watched the video and honestly, like, I don't need to remake it. I think more in my mind, I want to remake it just because I know there was a lot more I could have said and expanded on if I weren't so nervous. The advice was real good and like, yeah. Today, I thought I would do a more expanded tips for beginner herbalist video and just kind of talk about some things that I didn't talk about in that video particularly and I guess kind of speak on more experience that I've gained since making that video a year ago and how I practice herbalism now and the things that I feel like really matter to me when practicing herbalism. So yeah. Also, say hello to Febe, y'all. Um, I made the brave decision to not put my cats away. Oh my god. While well, making this video, so if it's randomly like noisy, I apologize, but I decided I'd let them live their lives today as I make this video and see if they can like handle it because they're getting older now. So, yeah. And for those who don't know me, hi, hello, my name is Sydney Rain and welcome to my channel. We're just like living life over here. I think my first piece of advice to anyone who is interested in beginning to herbalism is to honestly like narrow down why it is that you want to get into herbalism in the first place. I think herbalism is amazing and there's a lot of ways that you could use herbs from like topical use to like hair care and also just like consuming the herbs for wellness and it could be kind of overwhelming just because I feel like initially it's a lot of random information and it's coming towards you in all different angles and it's a lot to kind of take in and if you don't go into it with the mindset that you have at least one specific goal in the beginning that you want to work with then it could be very overwhelming and you kind of get pulled in a lot of different directions so if you're someone who got into herbalism because you simply like tea and you're interested in holistic wellness and using teas to your advantage outside of just like enjoyment, I would focus on something specific about teas and why you like teas. So for me, I like drinking tea because it's relaxing. Just sort of like narrow that down um, and use that to be your basis for getting into herbalism and research herbs that could help with relaxation and herbs that could be used for stress and for anxiety and going to sleep um, and start there and work your way into the world of herbalism through that one specific goal and expand once you feel like you have a better understanding. Another cool way that you could also get into herbalism is through like beauty and hair care. That's one of the ways that I use herbal knowledge a lot and that's with my lock care. I've made a lot of different lock herbal oils in the past and being able to observe the benefits and the power of herbs through my hair care has been one way that I've also grown my knowledge and my interest in herbalism. So all in all, you just wanna find some way to break into the herbalism community that allows you to stay focused on one thing. And once you feel like you've grown in your understanding, I think that's a great time to branch out and to expand on different goals um, and interests when it comes to herbalism. And that being said too, this is something that I don't often kind of like put out when I'm talking about herbalism, but I think it's really, really important that you consider your entire lifestyle and you look at your lifestyle holistically when it comes to herbalism and getting into herbalism. Because one thing that I feel like I don't see talked about a lot when it comes to people who speak about their holistic living and Herbalism is the fact that herbs are so subtle and natural that you need to be living a life that actively promotes those therapeutic benefits that the herbs have to offer. So it's not just about drinking more tea and finding herbs and using them. It comes down to what you're eating outside of those herbs. It comes down to movement, to sleep schedule, and whether or not you're getting the hours that you need and if you even have a sleep routine and all in all mental health as well like there's a lot of things that play into our well-being as a whole and herbalism is just one part and it's meant to sort of go and work synergistically 
with everything else going on in your life, which means you can't just take the herbs and expect a change to happen just because they're supposed to have a certain benefit. You need to be actively finding ways to promote whatever goal that you have in all aspects of your life, not just the fact that let's say you want to feel less anxiety so you start taking herbs for anxiety that's going to come down to sleep as well it's going to come down to diet it's going to come down to movement a lot of different things you can be doing to help your body feel its best and so herbalism is just one piece of the puzzle and using it as if it is an end all it's not really going to get you the results that you need or the results that you want and as much as consistency is key in that as aspect Allow yourself grace in the process and allow yourself to go through your phases and go through your seasons and acknowledge that you won't always show up as your 100% best and accept that sometimes you're going to be showing up at 10%. And there's an ebb and flow, you know, like you're going to have your highs and you're going to have your lows. But at the end of the day, it's just about showing up for yourself and really being there and creating habits and systems that allow you to show up for yourself and really be there. And so my third piece of advice that is going to sound crazy coming from me is don't just believe everything that you see on the internet. Don't just believe anybody who tells you anything about herbs because at the end of the day, there's a lot of information out there and there's also a lot of misinformation out there. And so kind of honing in on those resources that you feel like you can really trust is going to be key to creating that sound foundation for herbalism and the information that you hold. And so for me, that looks like buying books. I am very big in buying herbalism books. I do, um, on occasion, I will just like look up information online. Um, but I'm very big on getting most of my information either from courses or books just because typically that setting ensures that there's someone who dedicated quite a bit of time in their life to learning that information. And it's organized in a way that's a lot more digestible versus going online and searching, you know, five herbs to clear your skin. You know, like nine times out of 10, the information will have some truth to it, but you just never know. And sometimes I'll look up something about herbs and I'll see the first article and it will give me a response. And then I scroll down and there's conflicting information. And I think it's a lot harder to come to a clear understanding about the herbs and the practice of herbalism if you're allowing yourself to be subject to whatever the internet is telling you or whoever some random person is telling you on the internet. And that would be me. I am a random person. I'm here to share the information that I have, but I would not consider myself an in all resource. Regardless of what I say, you should check in with yourself and your health and what's going on with you. And I think I even remember recently seeing um, a creator. It's a very well-known foraging creator. She was talking about how there's been a recent surge of random fake foraging books online and on Amazon. And so that's another thing too, like, I think there's a lot of people out there putting out information for money and their cash grabs and to us they look like a quality source but it's really nothing and she was saying how one of her concerns is someone will buy one of these books and then because it's foraging you know the whole goal is to consume them consume something that they shouldn't and get poisoned or harm themselves and that's bad for two reasons one it's bad for the person obviously because who wants to be harmed doing something that you know they put their trust in and also too i feel like that brings a lot of fear and deceptiveness to a community that honestly doesn't have any bad intentions you know and so i think it's just really important that you do your research if you are interested in a book maybe research that author make sure they're real make sure it's someone that you would want to support and someone who you feel connected to and really just work to make sure that the information you are receiving and digesting is genuine and it's true and has the best intentions. Another pretty solid piece of advice that I recommend that you do is take time to learn the mechanics of the herbs rather than just focusing on what the herbs can do for you. And I say this because I've taken courses in herbalism that give me a very strong foundation for how the herbs work um, and the properties that herbs possess and really break down the herb itself outside of just like the effect that it has. And I feel like that has been the strongest contributor to my ability to understand herbs and to navigate the herbalism space with realistic expectations. And most books will kind of go um, and break down the properties of herbs and what the properties are and why they're there. But 
I feel like knowing the mechanic of the herb itself um, and understanding why it works with our bodies can be really beneficial when looking at the more holistic properties and um, spiritual benefits of the herbs as well, you know, because the herb itself is holistic, you know, there's some people that go into herbalism specifically and have a very scientific approach. Um, I follow a couple people like that who don't really talk about any of the attributes of an herb outside of their scientific benefits and I think that's amazing. I know people who have a more spiritual approach to herbalism and so it's a lot more holistic in nature but they rarely go into the specifics as to why those properties exist and I honestly don't think one is better than the other. I feel like integration is needed for both though if you really want to understand herbalism and use it in the most productive way possible. And so if you can, I would either invest in resources such as books that will give you that breakdown or look into courses that force you to go through that process of learning both the scientific side of the herb as well as the spiritual and um, physical properties of the herbs as well. And I think for me right now, one of the goals I have for pushing my understanding of herbalism is to learn and lean into that spiritual side of herbs more just because I think for my mind and my brain and how it works like understanding the mechanics makes a lot more sense to me than kind of like learning those spiritual properties. I feel like I have a much better understanding of the mechanics of herbs and the direct benefits because of that versus those more spiritual characteristics and so that's something I definitely am striving to learn more just because I do see immense value in that and I think it's just been a little harder for me to find resources that allow me to digest that information and kind of like keep it with me. I recommend just making trying to find a nice balance in between those two things and kind of finding yourself in the middle when learning about herbs and the information that you're picking up. I also think it would be very beneficial to document your process when you are learning about herbs and you are picking up this information. One, so you can go back and you can reference them, but also so that you could kind of see the evolution of your thought process and your understanding of herbalism itself. You know, you might find that what mattered to you in the beginning no longer even matters to you at the current stage that you're in. Honestly, I don't have any like journals right now, but I do keep everything in my notes app. Literally a lot of herbal information lives in my notes app and I always go back and edit or I'll go back and add anything that I need to add. And so I think it's pretty valuable to be able to reference your own thoughts and the process throughout your journey as well as be able to compare and contrast different stages in your learning process. And I also want to let y'all know I have been working on some templates to kind of help with that process of documenting the herbs and sort of like tracking your herbalism journey. So hopefully those can be of benefit to you as well and I'll definitely let y'all know when I will be having those available to you. And also kind of in conjunction with that, take your time on this journey as well. I know herbs are super exciting and it's cool to learn a lot of herbs and kind of just have that like knowledge bank stored in the back of your mind. But I think overall, this is like a very long term thing and hopefully it's something that you plan to share with future generations, whether it's yours or whether you're simply putting the information out there like I am for people who come after you who are interested. Take your time in the process, there's no rush. And I feel like this is something where quality will definitely have more longevity than quantity in terms of the information that you know and the herbs that you know about. And a lot of the information that I currently remember, honestly, is just like stuff that I've picked up over time. I wouldn't say there's any book or any resource that gave me most of my information because the more I've taken in, like. I only remember a percentage of that, you know, so just take your time through the process, you know, start with one herb, observe it, and then grow from there and allow yourself to evolve because like I said, it's not a race and you will get there and you will get that information. There's no point in rushing it because the information should be able to stick with you. Like it's going to stick with you. So there's no rush. You're good. You're good. And I think the last and final piece of advice piece of advice that I want to give in this particular video is this journey can be as serious or as unserious as you want it to be. 
And I say that because I feel like in each community, there's always like a spectrum from like extremists to people who are just kind of like there enjoying the ride, you know? And so don't feel like you need to be extremely serious about this herbal journey if that's not how you're feeling, you know? Like there have been points in my herbal journey where I've been really into it and thinking about it all the time and really just like making those moves and like advancing my understanding of herbs but like I will be honest right now I'm at a very mellow point in my herbalist journey where I have a lot of foundational information like I feel like I can draw from it when I need it but I'm not really like on it like that right now and that's okay I just wouldn't feel any pressure to be any type of way when you get into herbalism I think that should be something that evolves naturally and it does not have to be that serious like like i'm serious like yes there are things that you need to do in order for these herbs to be functional in your life i'm not saying do whatever and just hope for the best but you don't need to take it so seriously that you're putting all this pressure on yourself to be some type of way because you think that's the only way of doing it take your time figure it out and don't put any pressure on yourself to be any type of way I think the most important thing is that you feel authentic about the things that you're doing and you feel comfortable with the intentions that you've set for yourself and outside of that it's kind of just like to each their own you know like people are going to do what they want to do within their own herbal journey and you're going to do what works best for you within yours and so kind of like releasing those expectations and releasing any type of pressure you may feel. I think that's probably the most genuine way of going about your herbal journey and seeing where it leads you, you know? You might do this for a month and then decide you don't even care about herbalism like that, and that's fine, you know? Like, that was your journey, like, that's you. So, I would just take your time. It does not have to be serious if you don't want it to be serious, and if you want it to be extremely serious, make it extremely serious, you know? But that's your decision, and that's your decision alone and yeah i think that's all that i want to say today i feel like so much has changed since starting my herbal journey it's like it's insane and it's really hard for me to like think about and like process still just because in my mind it's still just kind of like me with this little old interest and like hoping people will find an interest in it too it's hard for me to see how much this community has grown um but I'm very much aware of it and I'm really grateful and appreciative of all that has supported me, so thank you. And for those that are new to the community, once again, welcome, welcome. So yeah, I think that's all for today. Please do not forget to like and subscribe and turn off those notifications. Thank you so much for tuning in and until next time, happy healing.